Japan's government has approved a record defense budget of $56 billion for next year that makes the Asian country the world's biggest military spender after the United States and China. Tokyo also loosened its arms exports restrictions. The changes are part of Prime Minister Fumio Kishida efforts to boost the country's military capabilities. Japan has had a small defensive military since World War II, but views North Korea and China as increasing threats. The United States considers Japan an important ally in any potential conflict. The new export rules will allow Japan to sell air defense to the U.S. And for more, I'm joined by our correspondent, James Chatter, in Taiwanese capital, Taipei. Uh, so first of all, what are Japan's goals in increasing military spending? Well, I think, you know, the primary goal is, is just a recognition that the defence and security situation in the environment in East Asia has simply become too precarious and too, too complex for Japan to continue this primarily defensive understanding of the role of its military. That's why we've seen, again, this 16% uh, increase on the defence budget from last year up to some 56 uh, billion US dollars. Um, much of this concern, of course, for Japan is, is, is focused on these three threats, what's often called the trilateral threat that Japan faces. On the one hand, you have, of course, China, who's rapidly expanding its military arsenal and concern in Tokyo uh, that Japan would become in some way involved in a potential conflict over Taiwan. The other hand, of course, you have North Korea, who's uh, been launching intercontinental ballistic missiles over the last few weeks. And then something else that's actually not discussed as much when it relates to Japan is the threat posed by Russia. Uh, Japan's air force often has to dispatch military jets to intercept Russian military planes, which fly out from Russia's Far East into the Sea of Japan. So really what we're seeing is this broad understanding and re-evaluation of what Japan's defense uh, capacity should look like in a very fast evolving and more mm -hmm. precarious security situation in East Asia. Uh, and James, you just mentioned Japan's air force. The spending includes a special focus on air defense. What does that tell us? Well, one of the, the key parts of this new defence budget for 2024 is um, a type of missile that's being dispatched likely to Japan's southwestern islands. So these are islands actually fairly far away from ja Jap Japan's main islands, Japan's mainland, actually much closer to where I am here in Taipei. Some of these islands are only a few hundred kilometres away from Taiwan. It's said on the closest island to Taiwan. You can actually see Taiwan's mainland on a clear day. The understanding being that if there was a potential conflict over Taiwan with China, of course, that Japan would use these islands to, um, to uh, launch potentially some kind of operation in assistance of Taiwan in concert with the US. But what the kind of key context here, of course, is that it's not just defensive capabilities that Japan is looking to expand, it's also offensive capabilities. And that's where we're seeing this really key difference in terms of, again, this understanding and this movement away from the pacifist um, constitution, the pacifist understanding of what oh. Japan's uh, military's role has been. And, and James, just briefly, if you would, because you mentioned, I mean, also Japan's uh, offensive uh, capability here. How is this decision seen from where you are in Taiwan? Absolutely. Well, I mean, one of the key things, it's something that's discussed very often within Taiwan security establishment, this, um, I, I guess, appreciation that the, the fate of Taiwan is now much more discussed in J Japan's security establishment, something that was um, a, a phrase that was developed by the former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was that a, a Taiwanese contingency is a Japanese contingency. And that's something that Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida has, has extended and is trying to, it, it appears, to integrate into this this new understanding of what uh, Japan's uh, defense capability should look like. So from the Taiwanese perspective, obviously, there's a lot of kind of um, uh, the, the discussions are kept really under, under wraps because of the unofficial nature of relations between Taiwan and Japan. But it's something that, that Taiwan and the US, of course, will be looking at um, in a positive light. Right. Well, thank you so very much, uh, James uh, Chater, as it is, of course, uh, James Chater, the DW correspondent for us in Taipei. Thank you.